Hi, sweeties. How are you doing? Welcome to Simnaya. And thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So today we'll be talking something very important and it's about what is going on in Israel as of today. And to be sincerely speaking, U.S. is doing so much, right? They are doing so, so much. The fact that they are still funding what is going on in Israel is really crazy. On a serious note and the fact that people are also ignoring this but i am looking at the people that tried doing something where are they you know the people that tried coming into what is going on where are they do i blame anybody for wanting to, not to come out then i remember that so many students student of uh, black students and students of colors took out uh to uh went uh, on their campuses and started demonstrating peaceful protest some of them are not graduating and also some of them are being expelled and all that and in some states if you ever ever protest against israel you are going to be expelled so what do you want people to do because it looks like if you say something your means of livelihood is going to be attacked so who wants his means of livelihood to also be attacked and i am asking Upon the ICJ that actually cautioned Israel over what is going on and trying to sanction them and telling them that what they are doing is against humanity and all that. And they try to call uh, what Netanyahu to order. So what is happening? Does it mean that nobody can stop what is going on? Because I know U.S. has a whole lot of hand in what is going on. But what can be done? Let's get into it. With no surprise at all, the United States was involved in the massacre that honored life 274 Palestinians in the refugee camp and left 698 people injured to rescue four Israeli hostages. The United States was involved. Everything that transpired in Gaza for the past eight months, the United States is involved. They are the center of this whole thing. Every genocide, every massacre, flower massacre, all of them. The United States is involved in all of it. An American team based in Israel furnished the information these people said, though it appeared to be secondary to intelligence gathered by the Israelis ahead of the operation. One person said the United, the U.S. material included overhead imagery. All spoke on the condition of immunity because of the operation sensitivity. The U.S. team composed of special operations and intelligence personnel working out of the embassy in Jerusalem has been in Israel since the genocide began in October. Since then, it has shared with Israeli counterparts information about hostages, uh, potential location gleamed um, from U.S. drone surveillance over Gaza communications intercepts and other resources. America is Israel. Israel is not a separate entity or a separate function. No. You, the United States, Britain, and all these colonizers created Israel to do their bidding in the Middle East. Israel is the United States. The United States is Israel. There's no separating them. They are the same people. Okay? There, there's no separating them. Okay? They were there the whole time since the beginning of the genocide since 74 75 years ago they are the reason why this genocide has been uh, um this concentration camp this holocaust has been happening all these years including sudan and in congo they are responsible so they killed 200 people in gaza to retrieve four Israeli hostages. I'm not even going to go there. because For those keeping score, that is 50 people per hostage. Just... But I am going to just talk and make a broader point. And that point is this. Over the past several months, we have seen, without a shadow of a doubt, that world leaders, world governments, and the citizens of those countries are perfectly okay with watching Muslims die because they hate them. 
I'm sorry, was, was I supposed to not say that out loud? You do know who the fuck I am, don't you? Just say it, just tell the truth. It's just tell the truth. People hate Muslims and they don't mind watching them die. I mean, since this thing began, some of the people who I used to follow, who I no longer fuck with, have made that abundantly clear. They hate Muslims. They like watching them die. But these same people will talk about the human race and we all bleed the same. You don't give a fuck. These people like watching Muslims die so much that they're not even recognizing that there are Palestinian Christians who are also being harmed, hurt, maimed, and killed in this. They think all of God is just one big Muslim place, so fuck them. Again, was I supposed to not say that in front of polite society? I don't give a fuck. Truth is truth. Now, mind you, I continue to say, as an atheist, that all religions are Ponzi schemes. Every one of them. I'm talking about the religious institutions. All of them are Ponzi schemes. I have no problem with faith, nor do I have a problem with spirituality, which means these people that practice this faith, I have no problem with them. I just don't agree with them giving their time and energy to a religious institution. But I've noticed, I have noticed, that there are a lot of people that are comfortable with watching Muslims just get blown the fuck to pieces. Because they don't like them. I'd say 50% of it is, I just don't understand them. I don't know. I don't know anything about them. And the other 50% is, what I do know, fuck them. Which I find so fucking ironic. I find it ironic. And the reason I find it ironic is this. The people who will judge every single Muslim off of the actions of the extremes forget that in your faith, there are extremes too. There's, in your religion, there are extremes. Benjamin Netanyahu is an extremist, an extremist Jewish person. Is that all Jewish people? No, it's him. His far right wing government, extremist Jewish people. I won't even say Jewish people. I'll say Israelis and Christians. <laughs> you know, sometimes. Christians should never say anything. Just, just keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. But they all have the time to shit on Muslims based on the extremists of the Islamic faith. But if we did that, Christians would have to pay for the KKK. And the funny mustache man. And the Catholic Church, which swore off on Mussolini's bombs in Africa. There are so many bodies buried between the branches of Christianity that they should never judge anyone. And matter of fact, ain't that in the book? I could have sworn it was in the book. I could have sworn it was in the book, but nope. No. That's why I don't want to hear that bullshit about we're all one race to human race shit. Shut the fuck up. It's all fun and games until they're Muslim. Then it's fuck them, kill them all. And over the past couple of months, I've heard some bullshit. <laughs> I've heard some bullshit. 
Well, you know, in Gaza, you can't be homosexual. They'll throw you off a roof. Matthew Shepard has entered the chat. I'm sorry, could you could you talk into my good ear? Um, I couldn't hear you over the sound of the thousands of men that died from AIDS and were told by Christians that it was God's punishment for them being gay. I could, could you, could you? You know, in Islam, a woman doesn't have any rights. I'm sorry, could you speak into my good ear? I couldn't hear you over the sound of we were, are, here in America, Christians are telling women what to do with their own fucking bodies. Could you speak a little louder, right in my good ear? Like, Christians have no room to fucking talk, let alone judge another fucking religion. So another Abrahamic religion? Shut the fuck up. And the funny thing about it is Christians don't like Jewish people either. They don't. But they love watching Muslims die. Oh, they love it. Some of them get Christian-ordained hard-ons from it. So let's just be honest. Be honest. 200 Palestinians die to retrieve four Israelis. And there will be a live someplace or a, a video someplace where people will justify that. Because they don't like fucking Muslims. And they don't care that they die. Imagine calling every Christian, every white Christian man, David Duke. Imagine that. They'd be pissed off. Excuse me? You ain't gonna call me that. So why the fuck do you call all Muslim men Osama bin Laden? Well, David Duke ain't got a body part, body count on him. No, but the organization that he represents does. I'm sorry, did you not want to hear any more of that CRT? Lynchings do count, you understand that, right? But we have to remember the Muslim terrorists of Charlie Hebdo, or remember the Muslim terrorists of 9-11, or the Muslim terrorists of 7-7. But we ain't supposed to remember the Christian terrorists organization is still walking around here burning crosses in people's yards and burning crosses as Christian identity lighting ceremonies. So can we just be honest? Can we? The reason the world leaders, the reason the citizens in those countries are turning a blind eye to what's going on is because quite frankly they don't like Muslims. They kind of hate them. Do you remember the little boy, the little Palestinian boy that was unalived by his landlord and his mother was injured by that same landlord after, 7th, uh, after October 7th. Do you remember what he said? All Muslims must die. And he was a Christian. He stabbed a kid to death. 200 Palestinians die so we can get four Israeli hostages back. And somebody will be in the comment section blaming Hamas because everybody in Gaza must be Hamas, right? Right? Stop lying to yourselves. Just admit you like watching Muslims die and get it the fuck over with. This is not the first time that the United States has used humanitarian aid as a cover for military intervention. In the 1960s, they approached the ruler of Cambodia, a country that maintained itself neutral during the Vietnam War, with proposals to help in their infrastructure, to build roads to inaccessible parts of the country, to make it better connected. Secretly, they wanted to interfere with the supply chain that supplied the Viet Cong, with whom they were fighting against. And they did it secretly because of the backlash of the operations in Vietnam that they had at home and in fear of the backlash of the international community, which would have come because of the number of casualties that they generated in Cambodia. Half a million from the 1960s to 1973. It is widely recognized that the reckless American intervention destabilized Cambodia profoundly and led to the rise of the Khmer Rouge. These actions resulted in the deaths of millions of people. Then and now, the United States did not consider that the lives of the people that they murdered on the ground had any value. They're not American. They're not white.
the difference between the United States government then and the United States government now is that they are expecting to be praised for this. This is a publicity stunt so that the government of Netanyahu can come home with a victory and Biden can potentially release some photos of himself in the Situation Room. Another significant difference between then and now is that millions of people across the globe are actually watching what's happening directly on their phones. They don't have to go through the filter of supine legacy media. We are all watching this directly at a time in which the geopolitical forces in the world are realigning, in which Europe is doubling down in their white supremacy against immigration, in which the areas of the Sahel, of Central Africa, and of the southern part of Africa are changing allegiances from France to Russia, from the United States to China. And more importantly, in an age in which the protestations of Western nations when it comes to human rights, when it comes to equality, when it comes to values, are being shown to be, for them, just another tool of control. To shield their allies and destroy their enemies. I marvel in stunned disbelief that they don't realize that this is going to come home to roost for all of us. The amount of war crimes being committed by the United States and Israel, it's next level. So apparently the pier that the United States built supposedly to provide aid for Palestinians, they let the Israeli military use that pier in a fake aid truck to, to you know, do their hostage saving campaign nonsense in which they killed over 200 Palestinians. You're not allowed to use fake aid trucks. That's a war crime. You can't use fake aid trucks to bait out people to try to save hostages, that is a war crime. Literally, if you like, you can go online, look at the definitions. You're not allowed to do like, Jesus Christ. So this is all I got from the stitches, and uh, man, shit is really getting, shit is so getting real, for sure. Because there are some things you see and you are doubting if this is real or not. But absolutely, it's happened and it's real. And the fact that U.S. is so much in support of almost everything going on in Israel is mind-boggling. It's really, 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 really crazy. And wait, just four persons, like they say, that were held hostage and 270. I heard there are more than, right? And uh, the kind of crime they have just or have been ignored or is being ignored by so many is really, really crazy, you know? And uh, the fact that uh, US is protecting Israel, it's really so bad. So, how did they use fake a truck? used to carry out rescue operation. Oh, dear. I want to ask, why is this still happening? What it, why is it that what it's going on in Palestine and Israel is still going on? And upon all the sanctions and everything, ICJ, right? The International Court of Justice, right? And uh, that they have uh, called out Israel. And nothing is still happening. They have told them that you, what you are doing is a crime against humanity. They have told them to cease fire. And the fact that uh, Biden also said that uh, if they do anything again, that they are not going to send in any aid to them. And it looks like he was actually capping because you all can see that he was actually capping when he said that. Because you all can see, before we could say Jack after saying that he sent in one billion US dollars and sent in some, uh, sent some arm. I'm like, I am still asking, why is it that uh, they are so into what is going on down there? And at the same time, funding them to maximum, like you know, giving them full support. Innocent kids are just being on alive every day. Innocent children. I mean, life is really horrifying because it looks like the poor or the innocent 
are always the one facing the trauma. Because tell me what is going on. People that know nothing about all this, their brouhaha and all that are the ones suffering it. You sleep and you don't know if you're going to wake up. You like, you know, it's just like your life, uh, watching yourself that you may live or you may not live. And uh, to my great surprise, I found that, that uh, uh, Palestine has overtaken, like, you know, the biggest, uh, I think they are the highest with amputee kids and all of that. Just to tell you how horrifying it is. And I really, really do hope that something happens that will stop this, like, you know, like, so there will be ceasefire because we can't keep watching people being on a live on daily basis. And some of your tax money are what is funding, what is going on there. So this is more like indirectly, you, your money, like indirectly, you are also part of it. I am not saying you are. But when the money you, you, you give the government is also going to wear somewhere that is not good. I mean, it's so crazy. And the fact that when you look around almost everywhere that the G side are happening and going on, and if you check what is going on, US is also number one in wherever, wherever it's happening. That tells you a whole lot. And I really hope they stop using your tax money to sponsor some bullshit because you deserve your tax money to be used very well. See you all in my next video. Bye for now.